Hi viewers, hi friends. Today I just wanted to uh, bring you into a new world of my channel. Uh, because in the future, in the nearest future, I'm going to make some videos about how to cook with uh, freeze-dried food. But for a lot of people, freeze-dried food is a bit of a mystery. And uh, some people maybe only relate to it as a dehydrated food. And some people even don't know anything about it. This little video here is for you guys who does not know much about what freeze drying and dehydration of food is and what is the difference of it. Because just recently I bought this little wonder machine here to do the freeze drying for me. Now most people who buy freeze drying machines they're doing it because they want a better economy in their home and they do it because they can do uh, a bit better um, emergency preparedness, they can uh, as, as a prepper store their food for a longer time than they normally can do if they're just doing dehydration or for that matter canning actually. But to start with dehydration, dehydration of food basically means that you're taking up the water in the food but you're doing it by adding heat. Normally the temperature is supposed to be around 40 degrees Celsius and then you slowly, uh, you don't cook really, but, but still by heat you will remove the uh, moist from it. You can do that by uh, using a dedicated dehydrator like the one I have here and I've been used it quite a lot. Uh, and you can use uh, a normal oven or you can use uh, the sun for that matter. I just uh, recently made beef jerky for my uh, upcoming kayak trip and if you don't know how to do that then take a look at my channel and see how to dehydrate uh, meat just using the sun. But problem with dehydration for me personally has been though I have experimented with it for years is that it just does not taste well when I'm out there. Uh, and it's not like I'm a gourmet cook or a chef or something like that. No, I, uh, but I still do like, as you can see, food that tastes good. And it just takes so much of the pleasure away from it when you're dehydrating it. Because the whole uh, product ends up shrinking and it becomes very hard. And a lot of the product really do not hydrate very well afterwards. So, uh, for instance, just take um, these here. This is a piece. That was actually a vegetable mix that I uh, made for one trip and it is uh, cucumber and peas uh, together and corn and I, I'm telling you I, I had this trying to dehydrate in hot water for 45 minutes and eventually it was edible but it was by no means a pleasure so I kind of gave up on it and um, had to either go by uh, shorter trips or I had to uh, live off the food that you could buy in the stores like instant uh, rice and, and soups and stuff like that and there's nothing wrong about it when you're out and having a good laugh well you uh, might not prioritize the food and you can still have a good view and you can still have a good exercise but now with a freeze dryer the game totally changes so the difference between a freeze dryer that heats the food or at a 40 degrees heat is removing all the water and it maybe takes between 10 and 12, 15, 20 hours depending on what it is. The freeze dryer, it does it in a different manner. It does heat up the, uh, the trays in this one here, I'll just show you, but it does it by freezing the food. If you look at how this one looks at the inside, then this one is the big one uh, from Harvest Right, which has got five trays and takes up to about, I think you said 12 pounds of food at the time. So it's a small one in all means. It's not like an industrial machine that you can produce a, a lot of food with, but it is plenty enough for the purpose of what I'm doing. But what happens in the freeze drying process is that the machine here, if you wanted to, to it freeze dries. It freezes the product. Now I'm saying if you want to is because you can freeze it in your own freezer to start with and then feed it in the machine being frozen and the production time will be reduced because the machine will not have to do it for you. But this one here will bring the temperature down to about minus 20. And when it happens, minus 20 degrees Celsius, when it happens that this one is at minus 20 degrees Celsius, the pump, as we got here, is a vacuum pump. It kicks in and then it starts to create an uh, under pressure in this little cabin here. You have this hole uh, locked up and closed properly and it starts creating a suction here and the cylinder inch inside this machine will then have a decreased pressure because as you probably know, if you are a hiker in high altitudes and has been trying to cook there, the 
temperature by which the water that boils it is decreased by an, uh, x increments depending on how high you are up. Now this machine here will bring it down to such a level that the water only have two different kind of um, circumstances can be in. It can either be in solid state ice or it can be in gases. It does not have that middle state that we have on the on the surface of the earth which is water, is fluent. It does not exist in that state. It only exists in either solid ice stage or in gases. So what happens is the machine here will bring the temperature down to minus 20 then the vacuum pumps will kick in and it will bring it all the way down to minus 40 and once everything is rock solid in ice then it will slowly increase the temperature when this chamber is already decompressed to a very low uh, pressure and then at, at about zero degrees or two degrees celsius somewhere around there all the water in the food will vaporize as a gas. This practically means that uh, when this process has been completed, the machine will know when everything is out of every, all the water is out of it. Then the product will stay identical to the original. Now, if you just take uh, this here, for instance, it's maybe not that easy to see, but here, here I got a pork chop. I got a pork chop in here and I got two uh, chickens uh, pieces too. They were identical to this. A little bit more colorful maybe, but not much. When I put it in the machine, fresh, this is raw meat. But as I put this in the machine and it's been dehydrated, it comes out uh, very lightweight. All the water is gone, but it maintains its uh, size, it maintains its uh, taste it maintains its nutrients it maintains its all really and all you got to do is just add water now just to compare a little bit and if you have a dehydration this was uh, original chicken i spent many hours to make some pulled uh, chicken breast and it was slow cooking for six hours it was fantastic it was delicious and uh, then I had to dehydrate it, but in order to dehydrate things, you have to have it chopped up into very small pieces, otherwise it won't be able to pull out all the fluids on it. And that's one of the major differences between freeze drying and dehydrating. You can see it's here. This is what I could pull in whatever more food I wanted to chew and hydrate it with water, which I'm telling you, it will still be chewy. It will not be the way it is uh, originally, while this is a totally different game. Now, not only do you have a full piece of meat here, that when you do hydrate it, then you still have a full piece of meat and you will be able to cook it as if you just bought it by the butcher this morning. Um, in terms of weight, I really don't have the numbers, but obviously when you are pulling out all the water, you're also pulling out a lot of weight out of your food, which is one of the reasons also a lot of backpackers, they swear to dehydrated food because you can make ready-made meals at home, at hot boiling water, wait for a minute, and it is edible. It is survival food in my terms, but it is edible. And that is what survival is about, it's about surviving. When, I, when I'm out there, I like a little bit more than surviving, I like to live. And that's where the freeze dry becomes interesting because this is just like dehydrated food, very lightweight. For instance, this pork chop in particular, it weighed 122 gram when I put it in the freeze dryer. When I put it, I took it out again, it was down to 34 grams. 34 grams. I had a whole chicken breast in here. The same thing went on. It was a 244 grams of uh, chicken breast. When I pulled it out of the machine, it was like very lightweight cardboard and it only weighed in at 54 grams. So from 245 to 54 grams. I can tell you six trays that I put in this machine, when it was done, I pulled 2.6 liters of water off the tray. So there's a lot of fluid in it. Now, I obviously also have uh, tested it out with, uh, this is uh, minced pork. The same goes here, very, very lightweight, weighs in at hardly anything. I think this was uh, 250 grams of pulled, uh, on raw minced pork. They ended up being 73 grams. Um, so this, this is uh, for a portion for two persons if you wanted to go out and cook something from basic. Uh, another one I had here, here is a uh, 300 grams of um, 
oriental rice dish, which I really, really love with curry. It is so delicious. This is a ready-made meal with minced pork and everything is cooked to perfection. All I gotta do is just add water. Now, compared to dehydrated food and free, then freeze-dried food absorbs the water perfectly and i will i'm telling you when you're eating this it is as if you have cooked it by yourself just like an hour ago when you're adding the water it doesn't matter how long time it's been stored as long as it's been stored properly food like this has a shell life of 25 years plus while dehydrated food has a shell life of about four years that alone is a big difference. Now, I don't intend to shave my food for 25 years before I eat it, so it is just numbers. But for those who are doing long-term long -term prepping, it is nice to know you can go and you can prepare whatever you want, whether that is vegetables or it is meat, it is ready meals, or it is uh, fruits or whatever. You can do it and it will last you a long time. So, yeah, I just, I just wanted to share with you how it looks like and what the difference is, is between dehydration and freeze drying. But now everybody are, or most people obviously are doing the dehydration process because as I started out saying, all you can do is using a dedicated uh, dehydrator, uh, things like this one here costs less than $50, you can buy something like that. Uh, or you could use the sun, uh, as you can see on the, um, on the beef jerky uh, video, or pork jerky video that I've made, uh, or you can uh, use your own oven. So that is something that everybody got access to. But if you want to go by something like this, it is an investment. It does quite, cost quite a lot of money, and there is some maintenance on it, but it is a totally and utterly different kind of ball game we're talking about here. It is such a fantastic uh, machine. And just five, six, seven years ago, it was not something for households. It was only for laboratories or for big industrial uses with the used machinery. Now we got something that works for everybody. So uh, if you want to know how to hydrate these the various kinds of meals and, and meats and uh, whatnot, then there's going to be a long series on my channel about how to cook in the forest and uh, both as a backpack or using various items like uh, my trusted uh, cast iron pots. I really love that one. Uh, but it's also going to be in pie irons, for instance, and uh, it is all as part of uh, a preparation for the upcoming kayak trip the 15th of July. So um, if you want to know and want to look how it looks like once this becomes a real meal, well, just stay tuned on the channel. But until next time, stay curious.